Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing? I don't know why my wall looks yellow and my hair looks red. And I don't know. I don't know. I tried to mess with the camera. I can't even get my colors and my shirt to come out right. Well, it might be more right than I think it is. Okay, well, hello. I hope you had an awesome wet day. In my area, it has rained all afternoon, which um, I guess the flowers and the trees and the grass needed some rain. As God's blessing, at least there hasn't been major thunderstorms, so I don't mind some rain if it doesn't come with major scary thunderstorms. So what I want to talk to you about today is where's your treasure? Where is your treasure? Have you been looking for your treasure? Do you even know what I'm talking about? Well, we're going to find out tonight. In just a minute. But we are going to jump into some prayer first. So let's pray. Let's pray to God. Let's just uh, thank Him for the rain. Thank Him for provision. Thank Him for protection. Thank Him for all the many things that He does. He does so much. And uh, sometimes we forget to thank Him. We need to be thankful. And we need to be grateful. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pray. God, we just come to You and we just thank You, God. We just... Uh, we praise You and thank You for all the many things that You do for us, God. Even the things that we don't even think about, God, that is part of your power. God, we just thank you for those things also. And we thank you that you're our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, that you are our shelter in the storm. You are our everlasting Father. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I Am. God, you... Um, you are the righteous judge that will come, that will judge all unrighteousness. God, but yet you are kind and compassionate and loving and caring, God, and, and patient and faithful. You keep all your promises and all your prophecies will be fulfilled, God. You are trustworthy. We can trust you, God. God, we just pray that you would open the eyes and the ears of the lost, God. That you would just allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We pray for them to repent of their sins and to return to a relationship with you through Jesus. We also pray for all the disasters, God. All the rumors of wars right now just constantly... Um, War hasn't been declared, but there sure have been actions that will probably lead to that. And we just pray for your protection in that. We pray, God, for people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. That you would just be with them and that they would feel your presence. And I have a few unspoken requests to God that I just want to lift up to you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, let's... Um, oh, I forgot to pull up my thing. Uh, and I've been in here so much today, too. There's really no excuse for not having everything done. Oh. Sorry. I apologize. Um, watch somebody and he always says I truly apologize and uh, I truly apologize for not being ready so today I shared I actually shared a song yesterday too this thought actually began yesterday so I'm going to read what I put yesterday too so I woke up yesterday morning with the thought, that's a hard thing. 
And so in that, you can get a lot of things out of that. I forgot my music again. Oh well, probably have something playing in my head. And I actually do. I have this song that I'm talking about playing in my head. Or do I? What is this one? No, this isn't the one. That's the wrong one. Well, I'm just going to share this one that I did today then. Because apparently I didn't share on this page the one that I did yesterday. So, we'll just talk about this one today. So I woke up with, it's a heart thing. Okay, so I thought, God, what is that about? And so then, this song popped into my head. Where your treasures are, there your heart will be also. It's a kid's song. I'm sorry. I listen to a lot of kids' Christian songs. And adults do. And, um, I shared it yesterday on my plane site, but apparently I didn't share it over here. But anyway, it talks about where your heart is, where your treasure is, then your your heart is there too. Your heart will be there also. And so it's a really good song. Um, I'll try to share it back over here later. And if you're curious, you can go and listen to it. And then... Um, so I got to thinking about that. Okay, it's a hard thing. And so my thoughts were, okay, people's hearts are not where they should be. People are storing their treasures here on this earth instead of storing their treasures in heaven where everything is temporary here and it doesn't last. You know, the only thing that really will last is the treasures that we store in heaven. And so, um, I thought about that, too. I am going to go ahead and I want to read what I wrote yesterday, too. So, hang on a second. I have to go back to my regular page and share it. Sorry that I am not even, I don't want to get over here on Facebook though and start liking and hearting and, and commenting. That's usually what I do when I get on Facebook, I heart and comment. Um, let's see if I can find this from yesterday. I'll just read it from yesterday. Oh, there it is. Okay, so here it is. And then when I get through reading it, I'll share it. Okay, so uh, this the name of this song is Treasure. And so this is what I was thinking about. Let me move it over here so I can read it. I love this song and message by Seeds Family Worship. It's, it's a kid's song. It's called Treasure. I discovered this song with Seth, my son. He likes kids' Christian music. I love the lyrics of this song. Um, this message is Matthew 6, 20, 21. I woke up thinking it's a heart thing, meaning everything we see and hear lately shows us the condition of people's hearts. Even looking for this song, the heart message is parallel on the demonic side, too. It is. I was looking for this kids song and I found some things that I didn't want to find. We were definitely in the most intense spiritual warfare that I have ever experienced. People's hearts are not right. We can see that clearly by their actions but in saying that only God knows whether people that have not accepted Jesus will. Only God knows all hearts and minds. Our job as Christians is to trust God with all we have. Our job is to share God's truths um, and the gospel of Jesus. Time is running out. We must realize that all we see happening is bringing us closer to the glorious appearing of Jesus in the clouds and that soon our true treasure will be realized in heaven. 
We must store our treasures up in heaven where nothing can destroy it. All we see here is temporary and soon to be left behind. If you are not saved today, please call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. Um, God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so that's what I shared yesterday. And um, let me see if I can share this to my page. Mm -hmm. Okay, whoops. Well, I went too far down and it went bye-bye. And it went bye-bye. Share to a page. And that's the only page I have. Oh, I didn't copy the text. God. Sorry. Again, forgive me. I have to copy the text. I don't want to copy everything. Copy. I do apologize for not being ready again. Oh, I'm good. It's, it didn't, it didn't let me do what I needed to do. It's not far enough down. Okay, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. I usually do this on my phone, which is really a whole lot easier. That way, if you want to go back and watch it, you can. Okay. If you want to go back and listen to this song later, you can. Where's post? I guess I could have just done it that way. Now well, this is not working out for me today. Where is the... Alright, clearly that is not going to work. I'll just do it on my phone later. Okay. So let me go back to the one that I did today. This is not my winning, my winning video anyway. Okay. Oh, mousey goat. There we are. Yeah, I don't know why I couldn't get that to work. I'll have to do it later. Okay, so this is the song I shared today. Um, my heart is yours. I'm talking about giving your heart to Jesus. Giving Jesus your life. And I love this song and message by Christian Stanfield. My heart is yours. I love these lyrics. My heart is yours. My heart is yours. Take it all. Take it all. My life in your hands. So when we give our heart to Jesus, that's basically what we're doing. We're putting our life in His hands. Nothing that we see or hear is going to last forever, but Jesus will. The treasure in heaven is so much more awesome than anything that we have here. This world and all the things in it are temporary. And as much as I treasure things here, possessions here, I value heaven more because I know that when I get there, all the things of this world are not going to matter, not one bit. I've been thinking again today about what God woke me up with, the thought of it is a heart thing. Many hearts have been damaged by events that have happened in their lives. But there is hope for restoration in Jesus. There is hope for healing in Jesus. Jesus wants all of us, for us to trust Him with our hearts and our lives, for us to have faith that all things will work out for His glory. I understand why people lack this trust of Jesus, or anyone really, because their hurts are... Their hurts... Wait a minute. Sorry. 
Their hurts and damage done by others is very deep. I guess they put up walls for protection. I have felt this way before also. I trust no one. I don't want to be hurt or let down. That's how I've felt in the past. I don't feel like that today. Well, I don't trust our government. But that's another thing. Um, please trust Jesus. He will never leave you or forsake you. He will always be with you. His love never changes. It is co constant. His forgiveness and grace never ends. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, I always end it the same. And I actually go another step because I do like to admit, believe, and confess also. Um, just so people know what the gospel is, you know. Okay. Got that out of the way. So thank you for your patience. So where is your treasure? That was the question. Where is your treasure? Is your treasure in things? Is your treasure in your car? Is your treasure in your house? Is your treasure in your phone? Mine's recording right now. Is this somewhat your treasure? This is somewhat one of my treasures. My holy Bible. It's very important to me. Would I run back into a burning house for it? Maybe. Oh my. If I didn't have another one. Because it's very important to me. Every, every word in here is a love letter from God to me. Is to show me the ways that he wants me to walk out this life. Do I understand every bit of it? Absolutely not. There are parts of this Bible that I do not understand. But you know what? I understand what God wants me to understand because the Holy Spirit has come alongside me and helped me understand a lot of it. And even now, I read things that I've read so many times and I go, oh, I didn't see that. Or I didn't see that applying like that. So it's, it's alive. This book is alive and it's God breathed and there are no mistakes in it. So don't buy into the lies that are going on to make people not believe God's word. God's word is truth. It is truth. Okay, so let's look up some of God's Word. And I did not have a chance to um, go through here and figure out what applied and what did not apply. Okay, well let's start. Let's just read Let's read Matthew 6, because Matthew 6 was my, um, verse reading today in new version, Matthew. Well, you know what? I don't know, because sometimes I don't get one. So, usually my friend gets up before I do, so I see what she shared, and that's what I read. So, let's just read Matthew 6. Because what I thought was so amazing about it is that the scripture that I'm talking about is in Matthew 6. But there's so much more in here also that is so good. Okay, and this is Jesus speaking. And I believe that this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. That's what my Bible says. Yeah, this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. 
Take heed that ye do not your alms before men, to be seen of them, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Now alms is um, kind of like uh, what you what you give, what you give. Don't make a big deal about what you give, or where you're helping people or what you're giving to the church. Don't make a big deal about how much or when you're doing it or, you know, it's um, it's really between you and God. It's not between you and everyone else. And when thou prayest, thou shalt be not as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets <clears throat> that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye, our Father, okay, this is our model prayer by Jesus, our Father which is in he which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So that is how we're supposed to pray. We're supposed to <coughs> thank God and invite His will and not ours. Let Him know what we need, you know. Uh, we need daily bread. You know, forgive us. Forgive us of our sins. And please don't lead us into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, his kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Forever, there's no end. And if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, that they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So that's kind of the focal. Where's your treasure? Is your treasure, are you laying up your treasures in heaven? Or are you depending on these things that are not going to last forever, that are fleeting? They're just not going to last. I know I'm on about my fifth phone since the smartphones came out. 
I mean, I have to get one like every two or three years because they just don't last. So things don't last. My car is like falling apart. All the fancy is gone. People go, well, I want your door shut. And I go, well, after a while, all the fancy leaves and you're just, you know, left with what's left. <laughs> so that's, that's how things are here. They're not going to last forever. They are not going to last forever. So we need to lay our treasures up in heaven because heaven is going to last forever. And this world is not. This world is... Uh, I don't know when. But there will come a day that God's had enough. And uh, He's a whole lot more patient than I am. Because I don't see or hear a fraction of what God sees or hears every day. But he has a plan and his timing is perfect and I trust him. Okay, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters. There's a lot of great things to be taught in Matthew 6. No man can serve two masters. We cannot serve the world and serve God at the same time. We have to choose. We have to choose. He will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon. And mammon is the world or things of the world or riches or, you know, expensive, you know, things that, again, won't last. We can't serve God and our things at the same time or the world. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment behold the fowls of the air for they sow not neither do they reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feedeth them are ye not much better than they which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or whither, wherewithal, withal, shall we be clothed? For after these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, that's a good, another good one. Seek first the kingdom of God. You know, don't worry about the things, about what you'll wear, what you'll eat, what you'll drink. Seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Wow, that's so good. And there's just so many parts of this. So many parts that you can break down. Um, giving without, you know, making a big deal out of it. Um, prayer. Prayer in private. 
you know, not standing on the corner and doing the long and repetitive prayers so that everyone sees you praying. You know, just pray in the closet, which I do that in the mornings. I do like to pray on here, though, because it's called Pray and Share. And it started out with uh, first, Second Chronicles 7.14. And that was why I started this last year. And so I still, you know, prayer is important. Um, and the model prayer, you know, that Jesus says. And then um, what we're talking about, build your treasures up in heaven, not here. And then about, you know, being full of darkness. And that our, our eye is um, where the light is. The light of the body is the eye. And then not worrying about, you know, what we eat, what we do. Um, that we can't serve two gods. There are a lot of great lessons in here. And then seek seek first the kingdom of God a lot of good lessons right here in chapter 6 okay well I actually in Luke in Luke 12 34 also I don't know whether it's the whole thing uh, 12 34 It does, um, it looks like it does talk about a lot of the same things. But um, <clears throat> 1234 says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. So, it's actually talking about the bridegroom, and when Jesus comes back. But that little bitty part is in there which is the same as Matthew 6, 21. Okay, Matthew 13, 44. It looks like that is another story. I kind of like the story about the man that and I'm not sure where it is. The rich man that tore down all his barns and built brand new ones. And then God said, your life is required of you today. He did all that work for nothing. His, his barns were good enough. In other words, what am I looking for? Matthew 13. I'm sorry, I started secretly looking for that. 13.44 says, what does it say? Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear. Let him hear again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and the joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. 
So shall it be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And you know that's so true. You uh, you have the story of the the tares and the wheat too. You know, at the very end, will be separated. You have the sheep and the goats. At the very end, God will separate those out. Um, but the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure. It is a treasure. The kingdom of heaven is a treasure. So where's your treasure? Is your treasure here on this earth or is your treasure in heaven where nothing can destroy it? Not moth, not rust, not nothing can destroy it. Okay, we already read that. Okay, I think that that is, there's something else, 1 Peter 5, because I saw this um, this morning when I did my Jesus Always. This was one of the verses in 1 Peter 5. I've got to get my other Bible out because this one is just, I'm afraid I'm going to rip pages Okay, I don't remember what the verse was that I read, but I go, wow, that is just like what I was reading a while ago. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll just read all of it. First Peter 5, the elders which are among you I exhort, which am also an elder in a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, lucre but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and give grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by, Jesus, by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Sylvanus, by Sylvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein ye stand. The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, so doth Marcus my son. Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Uh, peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So I guess the part that stood out to me was... Um, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Fadeth not away. So nothing will corrupt our crown of glory, which we will, in turn, put at Jesus' feet. 
and so in due time we will have our treasure which is heaven so I just thought that kind of went along with I don't even remember what verse it was But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory, like we are going to be in eternal glory, um, by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while. We are suffering now. <laughs> but not, a, not as much as a lot of people do. Um, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. So that is our treasure. Heaven is our treasure. This place, this place is getting more and more evil every day. More and more, I don't know. Just more and more, not like it used to be. Just more different, more restrictive, more, I don't know. You can't make stuff up anymore. You just can't because it's just so bizarre. Okay, so this, um, these are my notes. I wonder if I want to read yesterday's notes. I don't think so. I think they kind of go with today's notes. Good afternoon, God, because I think it was noon when I met with God instead of morning. Good afternoon, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, child. New opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new beautiful day, child. And I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, God. New opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new day to get things done. A new beautiful day, God. I said, thank you for all of my blessings, God. And he said, child, you see all that is taking place right now. And like I woke you up yesterday with the thought, it is a heart thing. People either have Jesus in their hearts or not, and it is their choice. Many of their experiences are because they chose not to accept him as their savior. They instead chose things of this world that are temporary and fleeting. They can and will be destroyed in an instant, but yet they cling to them with all they are. They do not know of the true treasure in heaven. They have been shown like you. They have been shown. They have not been shown. Sorry, it's so hard to read my own handwriting. They have not been shown like you with your friend, the peace and contentment, the beauty on her much younger face. And so he wants me to share this. So I think I've shared this before. Hi, my friend Josie. My friend Josie is here tonight. I have missed you, my friend Josie. Um. I guess it was last year. Last year is such a blur. Last year I was sitting in my chair. It was before my other friend passed away. I was sitting in my chair and I fell asleep for just a second. And in that second, I saw my friend that I used to work with. And she looked beautiful she looked at peace she looked so happy I had I had never seen her look like that before because I did not know her when she was the age that I saw her at I did not know her then I knew what she did and I knew but I didn't know her personally I knew her when she was older so I knew that God had sent me that image of her at peace. 
and and she she passed away a couple of years ago. So she wasn't alive when I had this like flash vision is what I call it. Her flash dream, whatever it was, it didn't last long. But it did give me a peace. It gave me a peace about everyone, everyone that's in heaven that's not here in my presence anymore. It made me realize that they they are like that. They are they look their best that they have ever looked. They are happy, they're content, they're at peace. Um, they probably wouldn't want to come back and I don't blame them. If I ever get there, I'm not coming back. Nobody's bringing me back. Um, but it just really gave me a peace because not long after that, my brother-in-law passed away and I thought, okay, I remember what God sent me. He sent me that for a reason. He sent me to show me that everybody that passes away from that time on to remember them just like I saw my friend, happy, at peace, you know, content, no turmoil, no nothing, you know, just complete happiness on her face. You know, I had I had never seen her look like that before. Like I said, I didn't know her when she was that young. And so God wanted me to share that with you because I know we all have lost loved ones. And so if I can give you any peace, just let you know that they are at perfect peace. I mean, there is nothing that happens on this earth that bothers them because they are at perfect peace so things on this earth cannot change things in heaven because it's perfect there they're love joy peace love joy peace no turmoil no drama no no nothing so just know that your loved one is at peace and they feel a constant love and they don't they don't need lights like I have lights on. They don't need lights because the light of God and the light of Jesus light up all of heaven. And they, they are in the most beautiful place. I haven't seen it. Um, I've seen pictures that, wow, that's awesome. But I don't think it's going to compare to what it really looks like. And Josie and I have a friend that passed away, too. Um, was it last year? <laughs> I guess it was last year. I guess it was towards the end of the year. And Josie and I had a friend that passed away. And I think of her like that, too. I think of her at perfect peace. She used to tell me my legs hurt. It hurts to walk. You know, she does, she will, her legs will never, ever hurt again. She will never struggle with eating the wrong thing or the right thing. She was diabetic and she struggled with that. She'll never do that again. So that's what he wanted me to share. He wanted me to share the story of my friend, which... Granted, I did not know her when she was about in her 30s or 40s. I did not know her. I did not know what she looked like. But I knew that instant that I saw that person for that flash second, I knew who it was. And I know why God sent me that. Because He knew. <laughs> I didn't know that I was going to have some really tough deaths coming. And uh, He knew. So, if you've lost someone, know that they're in that perfect place. Know that they're with a perfect God. And they will have never want for anything. And nothing can corrupt the treasure that they have in heaven. Okay. Uh, He said, help people to invite Jesus and have their heart changed. Only I know hearts and minds and can change hearts. 
It is up to my children to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. So much is taking place, child, and it is overwhelming for many, and many are oblivious to what is taking place. War is coming, and you see the contenders every day, and the words ramping up. No one wins from this war to come. It will be devastating for humanity. Few survivors will remain, and that is their plan as nothing is quite working fast enough for the evil side of this spiritual war that continues non-stop. The war is over souls and it is real. Oh. I gotta, I gotta turn the page. I started I started to start reading what I've already um, yesterday's. Okay, I said, I see all that you're saying clearly in your word, God, and I feel the spiritual warfare every day. Help me to be obedient to your call and all that you ask of me. Thank you for meeting me later today. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child, so go be obedient to me in all I ask. I will order your steps today in all that you need to do. Hmm. I cannot. Oh, the true treasure is here, child. I can have it. Not here. Not here. Remember that. All else is temporary. The reunion is soon, so be ready, child, at any instant. Keep walking with Jesus. Stay close so you can hear his voice. Uh, it will be so beautiful to see all of you again, safe and secure, child. And I said, Maranatha, God. My day was good, Josie. How was yours? Okay, so now it is time to do, I wish I had a, I lost one of my things. It's probably behind my desk. I think I'll clean my desk off tomorrow. I had time today, but I just didn't want to. Okay, well, we'll just use this. We'll just use this invitation to heaven okay mm. <laughs> it'd be nice if I could get my cameras lined up okay I'm not gonna cover up my eye I don't like that okay so this is God's invitation invitation to his heaven um, which is where your treasure lies your treasure does not lie here We need to store our treasures in heaven and our heart will be there also. Okay, so this is God's invitation into his heaven. Have you ever been invited? Has anyone ever invited you into God's heaven? The time is now to respond to his invitation. Repent and turn to the one true God. Because everyone is invited. No one is excluded. Everyone is invited. That is why John 3.16 is, I have a bracelet here, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16. I was wearing that one day and I took it off. But since that's my vocal verse for my ministry, I just kind of left it in here. Okay, so here's some scriptures. Um, about salvation as it is written there is none righteous no not one Romans 3.10 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God Romans 3.23 but God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us Romans 5.8 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord Romans 6.23 
Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6 That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 11 For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13 so those are some scriptures that go with salvation. And so this is kind of a, I don't know, kind of a visual to heaven. And this is what John saw. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. So that is going to be the new Jerusalem that comes out of heaven. And that will be after the tribulation. It will be after Jesus comes and um, annihilate, annihilates evil. So you don't want to be here. <laughs> You don't want to be here. You want to go in the rapture. You want to go in the rapture. Okay, so this is the salvation prayer. Uh, it's not the prayer that uh, saves you. It is the belief that Jesus is God's one and only Son that came to the earth to um, kind of be our example. Our example of love and compassion. And he... he uh, he healed people. He loved people. He loved people that no one else loved. Um, and uh, he was our example. But then he died for us because out of a tremendous love for us, he died for us. And then he was buried for three days and he rose. And then he ascended to heaven and he's preparing a place for us. Okay, so this is the prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you are God's one and only Son. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried for three days and rose from the dead. I believe you ascended to heaven and are preparing a place for me. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Clean my heart and help me to glorify you. In your name I pray. Amen. So if you said this prayer and uh, you believe that Jesus is God's one and only Son, then thank you. I mean, not thank you. And welcome to the kingdom family of God. Um, the angels are rejoicing in heaven, and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. And today is day one of your Christianity journey, so if you want to have a better relationship with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, then um, read God's Word every day and start in Matthew. Pray to God. We did the model prayer tonight that's in Matthew 6. Pray to God and praise. And I'm missing my praise music. My other phone is working too. So I could be listening, but 
I just didn't get it all set up in here. Okay, so I didn't do real great about getting things set up tonight. So please forgive me. But anyway, it is time now to um, do God's blessing for you and for me to pray because I think I've done everything that God called me to do today. So let me do that. So in number 6, 24 through 26, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. So we all need peace. So since our treasure is in heaven, then we are, our final destination is going to be full of love, joy, and peace. And so much more beauty that we can't even imagine. So, let us pray. Let me ask my friend Josie. Josie, do you have any prayer requests? I guess I have a song stuck in my head. I'm moving. Okay. Well, we will pray. I will pray for her and her family. And we'll just, tomorrow is Friday. I can't believe it's already Friday. Got to go run some errands tomorrow. I can't believe it's already 8 o'clock. This day's going by fast. I'm going to have to get up earlier tomorrow. God, we just, uh, we just come before you, God, and we just we pray we thank you God that um, you do have great treasures for us in heaven that we don't have to uh, cling to the things here that don't last and we know that there is so much better so much better ahead of us that it, we will be living in perfected peace that nothing here on this earth will affect or taint or take remove any love, joy, and peace from us when we are in heaven. God, we just uh, praise you for sending your son to die for us, for um, giving us that offer of salvation through his sacrifice and giving us an eternal place where we can live with you and with Jesus and with the Holy Spirit, with the angels, with all the saints, God. We just uh, pray, God, I lift up Josie and her family to you. I just pray that you would bless them, God, and protect and provide for them. We just pray for um, her children and her grandchildren, God, her brothers and sisters, her whole entire family, God. We just pray for them. We pray for Mr. Mike and, and the boys, God, that he has um, taken on to be that example of Jesus for. And we just pray, God, that um, you would guide and direct him. And God, we just pray for I'm going to pray also for guidance and direction, God. Pray for you to order my steps every day because things just work a whole lot better when you're ordering my steps than when I'm ordering my steps. So we just pray that you would order our steps every day, God. Just show us what you want us to do. Call us to what you need us to do to further your kingdom. Help us to be obedient. Help us to be joyful help us to realize that this life is temporary that it's not going to last forever 
but the life ahead of us will last forever and ever and ever with no end. So God, just help us to seek your kingdom first. Just some of the things that we learned today. Seek your kingdom first, God, and not to worry about the things that are happening around us or what we should eat or what we should wear or what we should drink. God, just help us to rest in you. And God, we just pray that you would help us to stay close to Jesus so we can hear his voice. So he can show us things along the way that we need to avoid. And we just praise you and thank you for all the many things that you do. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Uh-oh. My battery's running down on this computer. i got to plug it in. I have the cord right here. Because of the thunderstorms, I unplugged it. Um, battery doesn't last very long on this one I probably need to get me another battery but I'll probably if I get my big check from the government I'll just get me a new computer that's really what I need is a new computer I'm using that one at work it's just like <laughs> so much faster than this one okay well Y'all have an awesome rest of your night, an awesome tomorrow, awesome Friday, and uh, much love, much love, one of these days I'm going to get really good at this, much love and cyber hugs until I see you, good night.